tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Channel in wartime, on a harrowing night crossing the gray cold waters in a small boat, and at the tiller, the threat of instant death is in command, from which there may be no escape. Listen now as Escape brings you David Devine's story, Flood on the Goodwin. Is that one? Where? About off the starboard. Mm. No, it's a mattress. Lost in fog. Couldn't see the living, let alone the dead. I don't think we'll be finding any more bodies. Not the way the stuff's settling down now. Where do you figure the cutter is? She ought to be about a couple of hundred yards to port. Take it easy now, Uncle. Don't want to ram her. Don't you worry about me, Dundas. If you start singing out. Otto! We'll come about her. We're coming around your stern. Get any more? Yes. Three. Watch out for those thingies. I see them. There a hand there. Three more coming aboard. Any alive? No. All drowned. Come on, Meg. Let's get them up there. Oh, don't you bother, Dundas. Hey there. Can you send down a couple of men? Sure. My mate here, he's only got one flipper. Now, look, Mac, that doesn't make any difference. Oh, what's the matter? You're proud of it? No, but... Where are the bloaters, mate? Uh, a bloater? Oh, oh. Then a forward there. Forward? Right. We'll roll them in the cart and toss them up to you one at a time. Right. Hey. Right. Be sure I get my top back. What? I better get you, boy. There's lots of one arm men working these days. If you have to talk about it, oh, I don't mean no arm. Better than being one of those they're hoisting there. Just don't remind me of my arm, that's all. Bloat, as he called them. Man's been floating around dead in the water, he gets bloated, see? Bloater? Very pretty. You know what they call an old man like you? Never mind, now, never you mind. Oh, it's a bunch. Uh, how many been brought into you so far? Uh, counting your three, that makes thirty. Thirty? Uh, Lucky we got this fog. We'll be sitting ducks without it for stupid or messages it might be about. Or oh, U-boat. Oh, U-boat, that's right. Was it a U-boat sent the tanker down? No. No, a man they brought in an hour ago, he, he said it was a time bomb. Sabotage. Yes, went off in the forehead hole. Boom, bubble, 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 bubble. Who's here? That done it. I heard. Oh, my nephew lost his flipper in the RAF, taking it real hard. Oh, poor you, you shouldn't take it hard. No, who says I shouldn't? No, I don't get sore, Larry, or I'm just trying to cheer you. You know, well, cheer me by getting off this boat so we can shove off. Sure, Larry, sure. Casting off. 
Going back to Dover? Quite well. Fog's in for the night. We'll just make it by dark. By Dover? Oh, gee, head off. Lay off, me, Mac. Oh, he didn't mean any of I said lay off, Mac. Lay off. Oh, all right. Percy. Ah, that's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine doing a thing like that? Can you see a man doing it? Man, it's war, you know. War. Fighting is war. They didn't all drown. No. No. Only 29 of them. Did you say one was alive? Yes. The awful to drown... Awful way to die. Uh, wonder if it'll clear tomorrow. Up ahead. Yeah. Good navigating, Dundas. Ought to be right ahead of us. Mary! Dundas! Coming in! Dead ahead, Mac. Right. There. I'll jump it. Hello, you two! Look out, Mary! Oh, Dundas! How was it, Mac? Oh! Terrible, dear. Just terrible. Were there many? Thirty. Oh, dear. That's it. Mac, how's the fuel? Ample. We didn't use a quarter of it. Are you going to fish tonight? That's Mac. This is both. Fishing tonight, Uncle Mac? <coughs> In this fog, I should say not. But Dundas can navigate for you, and the water, they, they say it's calm as a bathtub. Well, I don't know. I brought you food, Dundas. Oh, I think that husband of yours needs some sleep. Are you going to start again? Oh, what's wrong? Oh, all day long he's been complaining like an old woman. Just because he had the bad luck to lose his arm. Shut, Shut up. up. See, see what I mean? Well, you know, you are a little rough about it, Uncle Mac. Well, what ought I do? Help him feel sorry for him? Now, don't? cut it, both of you. There was a man to see you, Uncle Mac. Oh, who? Well, he didn't say. He said he'd drop back. Well, what did he look like? He was very tall, distinguished looking. Who's that, Max? Oh, got me. Tall, you say? Yes, he's carrying a little briefcase. Hmm. Come for the payments on the boat, Max. No. Huh. Would this be him? Yes. Uh, oh, you were looking for me? Yes, you're Captain Mac. That's right. Um, who is this? Oh, it's Mr. Dennis, my nephew. The, uh, husband of this lady? Look, mister, who are you and what do you want? Well, that's very simple, but you must forgive my questioning. When one is engaged in my work, one can't be too careful. Your work? Intelligence? What's that got to do with us? I want to charter your boat for a trip. The government work, huh? Yes. The secret mission. Oh. Well, where did you want to go? To Ostend. Tonight. Belgium? Well, that's a fair haul. And there's the U-boat. The fog will cover you. I, uh, hmm. What do you pay? Well, the Crown provides handsomely in these cases. A hundred pounds. Your aunt. Wait a minute. Uh huh. Would you mind showing us your credentials, mister? Yeah, I wouldn't mind at all, my dear fellow, but the fact is, I'm not carrying any. You're not, eh? Well, this isn't what you'd call a casual visit. Well, you know. Use your head, Dundas. He's going where the Nazis are. No credentials. And would you mind explaining why you're sniffing around a little fishing boat like this? When you could cross on one of those big, fast torpedo boats they got over at the yard? I find this man insufferable, Captain. Now, what do you say? Time is going short. Why don't you take the torpedo boat? Or the sweeper. They got sweepers there, you know. Well, as a matter of fact, and you should be able to understand, there's a government boat. They might be seen by one of the enemy's shore stations. In this fog? You're a liar, mister. <laughs> and you're a very astute fellow. A gun. Yes, that's my ticket to us then, Captain. Yeah, put that thing down. Look out, Mac, he's serious. Indeed I am. Now, in. Do what he says, Mary. Now you, Captain. Make me. Shall I? Get in. This is crazy. And you, untie the rope. 
Are you, miss? You sit up there. Why, you don't stand a chance. We'll see. Free and clear. Okay, Mac. You're very reasonable. Captain? What? I'll sit up in the front with the lady. Front? You don't know much about boats, do you? No, and I shan't pretend to. Mm-hmm. Allison, mister, the harbor entrance is closed up. They got the submarine nets in there. But I happen to know that they're open until eight. And I've got to warn you. No trick. Because I'm very good. You are, eh? Hey, Dundas, he says he's very good. Shut up. And let's go. So you're a Nazi. That's right. You talk like an Englishman. Oh, really? A Nazi. Well, what are you, a spy? You could say that. What are you going back to the continent for? The war's not over. What time do you think we'll reach the Belgian coast? Round two, but you didn't answer my question. What was that? Why are you leaving England? You scared? If you like. As a matter of fact, I'm returning because I've completed my mission. And what was that? A matter of a bomb. That tanker, the one that went down off the coast. Is that your work? Yes. Oh, you stinking, filthy, bloody... Oh, no, no, let him curse. I find him an amusing old gaffer. Thirty men come because of you. Thirty? Well, dear me, there were 45 aboard, you know. With 29, Mac. 29, 30, what does it matter? This nazi, this sneak in the dark with his mission completed. <laughs> What's the time, Douglas? Quarter two. Uh, ought to be passing Goodwin Sands. Hmm. Tide will be over them, though. What time do they expose? Both tides at once. Well, that means we get a fast ride back, anyhow. If he lets us come back. Lousy, nazi. How do we know you won't kill us when we let you off? You have my word. Word. <laughs> Don't take on, dear. I can't help it. I'm, I'm frightened. Let her come back here with us. No. See how tough he is. He shoots women. If necessary. I'd like to see you get that close to me. Would you? Yes. Look, Nazi. I'm walking towards her. Mac, jump. Point off. Yeah. Point that gun at me. You're asking for it, you know. Bloody Nazi. Pete. Don't take another step, Captain. Duck, Manny. Bloody. Big <laughs> You can't hear you, girl. Don't slow down. I want to pick him up. He's dead. He's very dead. He was a good man. He deserves burial. And burial he's got. Now put your throttle back up. No. Your wife, Max. Yeah. Now we continue our little boy. <laughs> much longer, Dundas. About an hour. I notice you change course from time to time. Why is that? Channel current. If you ride with it, you make better time. I see. <laughs> and you'd like to be rid of my company as quickly as possible. That's right. Well, I'm glad you're being reasonable. The old man was a fool. You think so, eh? Well, of course. And so do you. Why do you say that? You've seen the war. You know how it is. That's right. I know how it is. Dundas, don't talk like that. Why, what's wrong, Mary? Don't talk with him. It's not right. We find each other very interesting, Mary. 
something. Yes, indeed. Tell me, how did you lose your arm? Oh, yes. It was a navigator. And a very good one, I imagine. Um, did it happen in England? No. Bremen. Bremen? I see. You did a very thorough job in Bremen. Yes. Got to be complimented. Thank you. Sunday. Relax, Mary, relax. Oh, Sunday. No, you must understand, Mary. Uh, uh, may I call you Mary? You must understand that it's a very extraordinary thing for the soldiers of warring nations to get together for a chat like this. Take a nap, Mary. What? Yes, why don't you? Here, you can pull this tarpaulin over you. Not and... that. What? It's got blood on it, that tarpaulin. Blood. But really, the old man was over there. Don't you see? Not from him. Oh? We spent the day picking up after you. Oh, I see. And you used the tarpaulin for the body. Yes. <laughs> well, then, of course, you mustn't use that. Oh, please. May I, may I sit by my husband? No, you may not. <laughs> Just be very quiet, Mary. Everything will be all right. Of course, a lot depends on you, Dunn. Why do you say that? But don't you know what I'm talking about? No. That wrench you picked up about 15 minutes ago, it's right behind you on the ledge. What? What? It's right behind you on the thwart. Would you mind dropping it overboard like a good fellow? That would be a foolish waste. Wartime, you know. Wrenches are hard to come by. Yes, I'm sure. You might not slide it over here. All right. Ah, slide it. Even if you could hit me accurately enough to disable me, the gun would go off and... Oh, you know. I know. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Dumbass. Hello. What are you fearing? Why don't you come and look? No, I don't think I'd better. Why not? Well, you may have another wrench there, or perhaps you'll try to take my gun. In which case, I'll have to kill you. Then where would I be? I might steer all the way back to Dover without knowing it. And so? And then I'd have to kill your wife so she couldn't inform. You see how it is. How do you know I'm not tricking you? I'm sure you're not. If we don't arrive by three, I'm going to kill her. And then if you should continue to be stubborn, there are ways of forcing you. You mean torture? Ordinarily, it's very difficult to do alone, but in your case, one arm that should be comparatively simple. Let's not waste words on all that. I'm taking you where you want to go, and I'm counting on you to keep your word to allow a safe departure. Of course. I don't believe in Dundas. But why not? Because you are what you are. Dundas, don't you see? They'll, they'll torture you. He's lying, Dundas. Please, Mary, please don't worry. You have my word. My word of honor as a gentleman. You see, Mary? We have nothing to worry about. Yes, it must be wonderful to be out of the fighting. Not bad. I'll be glad when it's over. Think it'll be over soon? Oh, yes, quite soon. You heard about buzz bombs. Yes, but that's only the beginning. We're developing weapons a thousand times as terrible. Ten thousand times as effective. Really? Oh, your wife seems to have gone to sleep. Well, I can't see very well in this dark. Against my knees. Uh, about your new weapon. You wouldn't tell me all this if it were your intention to allow a safe departure, now would you? Well, I'm sure your agents know this by now. I don't know. Um, how much longer until we reach the shore? Not long now. I'm bringing her into a deserted beach a few miles outside of Ostend. I see. If you'll look ahead, you may see light soon. Uh, straight ahead? Yes. Huh. Impossible. This fog is much too... I saw it! I've got the gun! Give me that shoe! Stand back! That's it. I'll raise them good and high. Oh, Dundas, I, I thought he'd never drop his wrist. I, I waited and waited. Good work, Mary. Take the wheel. Yes, Dundas. Well, well. Remarkable woman, your wife. Yes, indeed. 
Unfortunately, there's no cartridge in the chamber. Pointed at your gut, why don't I pull the trigger and see if you're telling the truth? Uh, perhaps you'd better not. I don't see why not. If it's empty... No, 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 no. It's loaded. Hmm? You? I-, I wonder if you are the type who can kill the man he's faced. I don't know. I've never done it. It's very difficult, you know. Just think of me as a fellow human being, flesh and blood like yourself. Think of the infinite genius that went into making this body of mine. The skin, muscles, arteries, veins, organs, vessels. And the blood. The blood. You know, murder is a very difficult thing when you're face to face with the murder. I know. I don't feel as though I could kill you right at this minute. But suppose I try. All I have to do is squeeze the trigger ever so little. Now, wait. No, don't. Why not? My life is worth a lot to me. More, believe it or not, than my pride. My honor, my love of Germany. Much more than that. All right. You have a proposition? Yonder. Still, Mary. I know what I'm doing. Yes, you keep out of it. What is your proposition? Money. You're going to need money, aren't you? A man with one arm has a tough time of it in peacetime. Jobs are hard to get. Go on. Well, I have several accounts in London banks. Big accounts. I can write you a check. You can cash it tomorrow. How much? A thousand pounds. I can't hear you. Dundas, don't do this. Two thousand. Three. Five, then that's all the money I have in the world. What about on you? you yes, yes. In the briefcase, 150 pounds. I'll get it off. But, but the briefcase... I'll take care of that after you leave. Write the check for 5,000 pounds. Oh, Dundas, please don't do this thing. Your wife doesn't understand these things. No. For this, I let you off at the beach. Of course, I want to warn you against mentioning my name. Oh, but, but of course, yes, I'll, I'll make it out in cash. Ah. There's the check. Thank you. John. Aren't you going to shoot? No. Bargain to bargain, I'll follow through. You are a... an honest man. Deal's the deal. Yes, 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 that's right. You better take the wheel. Shall, shall I take the gun, Dundas? No. Oh, please, Dundas. Please let me hold no, it. No, Mary. But, but why in the name of heaven can't I? You can't steer and cover him at the same time. Not with your one hand. If you take the gun, you'll shoot him, Mary. I know you. No, no, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. That would be dishonest, Mary. We've made a deal, this man and I. Yes, we have. An honorable deal. But how to steer and all, that does pose a problem. It's... Mary, bring me that big wrench. All right, Dundas. What are you going to do? Since I can't handle the wheel and the gun, since Mary's not to be trusted, I'll keep the wrench for just in case. Solve the problem very simply. Oh, Dundas, you idiot. You threw the gun in the sea. And you, sir, you'll find a fishing line with lead on the end of it, right up there in the front locker. Huh? I'm going to slow down now. We're almost there. You'll do the sounding for me. Yes, 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 of course. You deliberately threw the gun overboard. You're selling out. Five thousand pounds. I have the line. All right, throw it ahead of you. Then feel when it touches bottom. Then measure the depth by your spread arm. Here goes. Oh, Dundas, Dundas. I, I know the war is a shock to you, losing your arm and all, but, but don't do this. You'll regret it all the rest of your days. Hit bottom. How deep? Two. Three. Four. Five, that's all. We're closing in on the coast. Swing again. All right. We'll hear the surf in a minute now. Will not be very strong. Low tide, you know. Two, three, and a half. All right. Get ready to jump. Jump. This boat hasn't wheels. You'll have to walk the last ten feet in. All right. Get ready. Here we are. The minute you hear a great jump out and push the bow around. Right. Dundee. Dundee. Quiet, Mary. All right, here goes. Good night. Good night. Sucker. 
Why, sucker? That shit! The bank is short of funds in the name I signed. Oh, really? Found the beach? Yes, I'm on it. Take a few steps. Why? It's... It's not this. There's water beyond. The bank is short of funds. That beach is short of sand. Where am I? You're on Goodwin Sand. Dover is just six miles that way. Which way? I didn't say. And if you're thinking of swimming, I can tell you you don't stand a chance. You see! Further out! It's low tide now, but wait a while. In a few hours, it'll be ten feet over your head. <laughs> Drowning's not pleasant, not safe. If you had your gun, you could shoot yourself. You could hang yourself with your belt. But there are no trees. So think about those men you drowned today. Think about them while you wait. I may be around to pick up your body soon. Maybe. Wait! Wait! Good night, Lucas! <laughs> Escape has brought you the David Friedkin Morton Fine production of Flood on the Goodwin. The story is by David Devine and adapted for radio by James Poe. Featured in the cast were Betty Harford, Vic Perrin, Joseph Kearns, and Ben Wright. Also heard were Richard Peel and Alec Harford. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leif Stevens. Next week. <laughs> You are in the jungles of Haiti, outside of Port-au-Prince, in a night heavy with tropics and small sounds of terror. Below you, a sheer drop of almost half a mile. In back of you, a man with a submachine gun, from whom there is no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you the Friedkin Fine story, Night of the Gun. Stay tuned for Night Watch.